Hi, this is Giulia Giardina. I'm a therapist from Italy. This presentation is called Mind the Gap, Intergenerational Communication Gap in the GSRG Communities. Young, Gay and Illegal, Then and Now, is the title of a video about a conversation between two gay individuals. 65 years of age difference, Percy and Lewis sit across from one another. They have a chat that reveals similarities and differences regarding their sexual identities, when homosexuality was illegal and when it was not. Percy and Lewis' conversation is a sample of the potentialities of intergenerational communication between two members of the same community. It shows us why it is important to mind the intergenerational communication gap within the GSRG communities, which is the theme of my today's presentation. The GSRD communities are sometimes referred to as families because they can provide the sort of support and safety that the biological family might offer its members in other circumstances. They can also be considered families because they include different generations whose relationships with one another are framed by differences in age and historical experience. Queer relationships are neither grounded in biology nor procreation and often operate outside the legal domain. They cut across traditional categories of families by subverting, rejecting, or overriding by a legal classification. The community, however, has been proven to provide comfort, protection, support, and education, and foster a sense of belonging to its members, especially when different generations are involved. In research, Limited attention has been paid to GSRD intergenerational relationships, other than the assumptions about older adults being a risk to youth. As sexual predators or corruptors of youth would be seduced into joining GSRD communities. Such assumptions have been responsible for hindering spontaneous interactions across generations. They are related to stigma, expectations of rejection, and discomfort of the people involved. Poor connections among generations within the GSRD population are also associated with substantial differences between experiences and perspectives and have been defined as the intergenerational gap. When intergenerational relationships in the GSRD population got the attention of the research, they have been mostly addressed through a focus on the rapture instead of a bridging framework. Some scholars, though, argue that an emphasis on a gap may neglect the potentialities of a rich intergenerational exchange. They suggest shifting the perspective to a new framework for thinking about intergenerational relationships that can enhance the experiences of GSRD adults and youths who comprise them. When the elders are relegated to the past and the youngsters to the future, agency and connection to one another in the present are denied. The assumption of a generational divide may create a sense of perpetual debt to the past, blocking cooperative relations through time. The following is an overview of the existing findings about the connections and disconnections across generations within the GSRD population. First of all, it has been pointed out that in the GSRD communities, contact between youths and elders is not an intrinsic element of social systems, as is true in most biological families and in other communities that face oppression, such as racial, ethnic or religious communities. Rather, GSRD interactions tend to be age-segregated. For example, in some countries, youth can't access bars, venues historically relevant to the gay community. Another example of age segregation is given by self-help groups and events mostly addressed to the youth. Therefore, contacts across generations are mostly arranged with the explicit intent of creating intergenerational interaction. Such division can be accentuated by stereotypes each group may hold about the other, which can be seen with skepticism. Given that age-related stereotypes appear to be heightened by a lack of interaction, 
age segregation within the GSRD communities is likely to be self-sustaining. Differences between how today's youth and previous generations understand and enact the GSRD identities cannot be denied and have been broadly discussed by research. From the level of comfort with their own GSRD identity to the engagement in advocacy and activism, one of the main divisive areas identified by scholars concerns the concept of fluidity or flexibility. Youths are embracing expanding their own creative identities and subverting fixed categories. The challenge for older generations is to recognize them and for young generations to not discount the work older generations put into legitimizing their identities in the past. Moving forward, it is necessary to specify that when we think about adults, older generations or youths, we can't think about homogeneous collectives. In addition to the inevitable individual differences among members of any group, GSRD generations may be associated with substantial differences when demographic variations or intersectional identities are present, such as black, indigenous and people of color, ability or disability status, socioeconomic status, level of education, rural, urban life, and many other features which add complexity to the simplistic category of GSRD identity. Another major factor that may prevent effective intergenerational communication is the evolution pace in the GSRD culture. The rapid pace of change in the GSRD history may mean that GSRD adults are grandparents to teens, since the distance between generations is accentuated by continuous evolution. An example is the depathologization and legalization of homosexuality and transgender identities. Another example of the rapid pace of change is given by the spread of role models and the public discourse around GSRD identities. Most GSRD people who are now adults can recall the sense of loneliness in their experiences. Today, instead, streaming services along with social media platforms offer a great number of opportunities for queer people to present and represent their lives. When changes are so rapid, extended and transformative, the existing cultural system may be unable to integrate them. The incapacity of depicting the future makes the process of understanding the youth's needs more complex for the older generations, potentially drifting them apart. In addition to these broad changes, dramatic events produce differential effects across generations. For example, GSRD youths are growing up in a world where HIV is not a synonym for death or homosexuality itself. Another example is given by the different waves of feminism and their complex impact on society in general and the GSRD communities specifically. Feminism influenced the nature of the emerging gay rights movement in the past, while more recently it opened up to trans inclusiveness. The concept of generation itself is related to major events in history. The term generation, as it is used in this presentation, doesn't refer to age-segmented groups, but it is intended as the result of major socio-cultural events. In this view, a generation may span only a few years when those years are featured by profound changes. When we think about GSRD generations, we should consider a queer time, a concept of a life trajectory unscripted by the convention of heterofamily structures, child-rearing, and especially linear temporality. Generations shouldn't be intended as fixed age categories, but as relational ones. Intergenerational encounters, rather than its unbridgeable gaps, may help us in making the community thrive. Much of the communication gap between GSRD youths and their older counterparts stems from misunderstandings across an alleged generational divide created by developmental, social, and historical variables. I refer to discrepancies between the lives and culture of different generations. 
the tendency to an age segregation within the GSRD population, the extreme speed of change, and the mutual skepticism across generations. These elements could lead us into considering the generational gap more than the bridging perspectives. If it is true that both both youths and adults contribute to the divide, we should notice that both can contribute to its dissolution. And such a task is not an impossible one. Let's have a look at the role youths play in the gap. Youths may provide a fresh perspective and resort to more creative approaches. On the other hand, youths often lack relevant experience and access to useful resources and can lack historical perspective on GSRD issues. How can youth resist feeling the gap? Youths may perceive adult efforts as intrusive, condescending or irrelevant. They may be resistant to input from adults, prone to seeing their own experience as unique and disconnected from that of others. When this happens, they can rely on stereotypes of GSRD adults feeding the gap and avoiding positive relations. The main neglect similarities between their circumstances and those of earlier generations. What about the adults? What role do adults play in the gap? Adults often have greater experience and access to resources. Also, adults may be more familiar with the historical roots of the community and how can they be resistant to filling the gap. Adults may over-identify with youths, failing to see the distinctiveness of youth experiences or projecting their youthful hopes and needs. Adults may try to address or reenact their own youthful experiences by directing youths to theirs. Furthermore, they may resort to common memories responsible for establishing biased beliefs about the reality lived by GSRD people. In other cases, by acknowledging the resources and opportunities available today, adults may suffer from the comparison to their own experience. Such a dynamic may make youths feel pushed, because of their privileged position, to fulfill the dreams that have been denied to adults instead of defining and enacting their wishes. As already said, at times, GSRD adults may assume that today's GSRD youths encounter the same sort of harassment and discrimination they experience, reinforced by the research on higher risk from teens' mental, mental health. The emphasis on experiences of suffering and isolation, though, fails to recognize the many resourceful, creative and joyful lives of young GSRD people. When the GSRD adults' residual fear pain and shame prevail, the GSRD youth can experience their issues and challenges as amplified by their community's past. Risks stem from such perspective, creating the imagery of suffering and shame that could be hard to be found relatable by the youth. Oppression is a key topic when we talk about the functions fulfilled by the intergenerational exchange. Mutual support and exchange across generations may act as a process of unlearning and healing the internalized shame and oppression and cis heteronormative expectations imposed during childhood. Intergenerational effective communication, shifting from the traditional portrayal of adults as teachers and youths as students, is a bi directional learning tool. Adults must be receptive to learning about the communities as well as the youth from the older generation. Scholars argue the importance of challenging notions of intergenerationality as an unidirectional passing down of knowledge. Rather, we should consider multidirectional relationships of care, learning and advocacy throughout queer lives and networks. This is why it is important to understand how both youths and adults can contribute to the intergenerational communication. How can youth specifically contribute to intergenerational communication? 
by accepting multiple and diverse experiences as adequate groundings for shaping the DSRG communities. By bringing a critical look and generating alternatives to the past. By giving voice to their own experiences and participating in building educational offers. What about adults and elders? They can contribute by sharing the history of the GSRD communities and their own experiences, by acknowledging their power and resources and acting as guarantors of the different perspectives that need to be heard and honored. GSRD elders, adults and youth can all contribute to filling the communication gap across generations. Following, you will find some key points and suggestions. Respect. Recognize the common threads that unite the GSRD communities and value the differences as well as the similarities among generations. Education. Find a variety of forums for providing youths with information about GSRD history and about movements for equal rights in general. Involve GSRD youths in designing educational tools and programs aimed at them including stories of affirmation and success, resilience and creativity, as well as experiences of oppression and negative outcomes for mental health. Intergenerational mentorship. Arrange opportunity for youths to interact with GSRD adults who are conducting a variety of life. Relationships that extend over time are most valuable in deconstructing stereotypes as alternative models. Younger members can, in turn, offer their ideas and up-to-date perspectives on the present and future trajectory. Collaboration Organize events that offer a spotlight for youth to share experiences that are different from the ones expected in the oppression narrative. However, always consider the impact and efforts of the GSAD youth narratives on them, when asked to be shared or listened to. It is crucial to avoid the exploitation of the youth's vulnerability. Create opportunities for recognizing and exploring the connections among various forms of oppression, thereby fostering a more integrated vision of the GSRD population in the larger pattern of social change. Recognizing privilege. Recognize the privileges and discrimination that different individuals face based on their generation, race, class, and other factors intersecting the GSRD identity. Work with members of or other oppressed groups in forging alliances that will sustain collective efforts toward equal rights for all people. In conclusion, the creation of a conversational bridge between GSRD generations is possible by acknowledging that the distinctive experiences of each generation request attention, as well as age-specific interactions. Different generations' members should be acknowledged as co-participants in the present, each with a valuable perspective worthy of respect, and each willing to talk across the alleged intergenerational divide. Thank you for your attention.